Hello. Hello, Bill. It's David Evans here. Oh, hello, yes. I'm really sorry, but something's come up and I'm afraid I won't be able to interview you tomorrow. So, that's not a good time now, then? No, I'm really sorry. No, no, that's fine. Um, so not, but I will have to check my diary. Just a moment, I'll put the phone down. Hello, yes. Um, sometime towards the end of next week? That's fine with me. I mean, I could do Thursday or Friday. Uh, well, whatever's easiest for you, really. Well, it doesn't really make any difference. Um, Thursday I have to take my cat to the vet. Friday, then? Yep, yeah, that's fine. Um, 2pm? That's fine, that'll give me plenty of time to get to you. Right, I'll make a note. Again, I'm very sorry for the inconvenience. Um, I would like to speak to you, though, because I want to hear your thoughts on Malcolm Williamson's piece. No, it's a, no, don't worry about it. No, there's no problem. Uh, it's no great hurry. But we must get it done. Yeah. Thank you very much again. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Hi David, it's, it's Hannah. Sorry, can I call you back? It's rather noisy here. Uh, okay, sure. Hi, what's up? I'm afraid it's about William, Bill. He's had a heart attack. Is he okay? He's dead. He had a heart attack three days ago. He died at home. They only found him this morning. I'm sorry, I thought you might have heard. No, I hadn't heard. I was supposed to interview him. What about that paper he did on the call of the wood pigeon? I know. He was only 50. What am I going to do? Bill's opinion was vital. Is there someone else you could interview? Someone who knew him? Bill? I don't know. He wasn't very sociable. Someone who worked with him? Well... There's Peter Hughes. I mean, nobody will know who he is, though. He's not a very well-known name. I'm only trying to help David. Sorry, yes. Yes. I know you are, thank you. Well, I could give him a ring. I've got his number somewhere. It's better than nothing. Yes, thank you. I'll ring him. Thank you for letting me know. No problem. Keep safe, David. I will. Thanks. Goodbye. Bye.
Right, well, I guess we should go north. Um, but do you want a drink, a tea or coffee or something? No, no, I'm fine, thank you. Water? Yeah. Yeah, I think it'd be nice, though. Oh, thank you. Um, th thank you for doing this, by the way. No problem. No problem. Not hugely busy just at the moment. Sorry about this. These are, these are wet, actually. The dishwasher doesn't seem to be working very well. I'm not drying stuff properly. That's okay. There's nothing wrong with it, don't worry. That's okay. How long have you lived here? Um, about eight years. Something like that? Yeah, eight years. Right. Quiet? Very, very quiet. We like it that way because it's, you know, from a musical point of view, it's it's good, you know. You can have your musical thoughts and not be interrupted, you know. Let's go through this way, actually, because that's where I was working. Okay. Right. Right. right, do you want to sit over there? Okay, thank you. I'll just put my back down here. Yeah, anyway, sorry about the mess, but uh, we've been... We've been flooded a few months ago, but oh. you know, the, the knock-on effect <laughs> means that we're oh, right. having to store things in unusual places. So it's not, it's not always like this. Okay, <laughs> that's, no, that's fine. That's fine. Right. Cool. Thank, okay. As I say, thank you very much for. for no problem. To me. I'm happy to, to speak about him because I, you know, I think, I think he was underrated essentially. But um, yeah, you, you tell me what you want to know. Okay. Um, so, so Bill's paper, the, the on the call of the wood pigeon. Um, do you what? What was the reason that you thought it, it it wasn't actually published? Well, I mean, there are going to be several reasons. I mean, one is, you know, I think it's political essentially. But uh, I don't think he fitted in at Newcastle. He was at Newcastle University. He was a, a lecturer there, and I mean, I personally think he should have. He, I think he should have had a personal chair, but uh, you know, he didn't really. Essentially, he didn't talk about music in the way that the establishment there right. would, would appreciate, let's put it that way. I mean, how long did you know um, Malcolm? I mean, or when yeah, he, Malcolm I, Williams, I mean. Well, no, I suppose Bill, uh, you, you knew Bill for quite a long time, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. I suppose so, for roughly 12 years, something like that. Right. What, I mean, what kind of person was he? What, what, did you know him well enough to, I mean, what, what motivated him? Uh, what, what motivated him? Um, truth, I suppose. Hmm. That's a very difficult question to, to answer. What motivates him? Um, yes, I suppose I didn't know him intimately. You know? um, yeah. I wouldn't say he was a best friend or anything like that, but um, he's a very sensitive person. Um, you know, he would call a spade a spade. And yeah. of course, that's un, unpolitical, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. So therefore, that's why I think he was, he was, uh, but do you underrated and, and not published as much as he should have been. I mean, what did you think of his analysis of the piece? Well, I think it's brilliant. I think it's it's ahead of its time, essentially. But there's another reason why, you know, a lot of his ideas were were ahead of his time, and at the time they were considered to be off the wall mm -hmm. because. There, there wasn't a context for a lot of his ideas, and of course, then you have the benefit of hindsight years later, seeing the developments that actually take place, um, and then you can see why well, he was on the right track. But at the time, why is he thinking in those along those lines? It doesn't really mm -hmm. make sense of where things are going in inverted commas. Mm -hmm. I mean, do you share his his thoughts on on on? The analysis or the conclusions of the analysis. I mean, what would you, what would your take be on on the, um, the call of the wood pigeon yourself? I mean, necessarily, I'm not going to agree with everything. No. <laughs> um, but I think the you see what really impressed me is that he. I mean, how how technical can I go? With no, no, it's, it's it's as technical as you want. Right. Well, I mean, he didn't call it this, but he used some of the analytical principles of inversional hexachordal combinatoriality, yeah. which which is a a way of analysing 12 note music within within a sort of Schoenberg um, tradition and he applied that way of analysing music to this piece by Malcolm Williamson called, called Wood Pigeon um, but he did it in such a way as to dovetail excuse the pun, <laughs> to dovetail that with the music of Bela Bartok and right. that, that that part of Bartok's music that was a response to what Schoenberg was doing. Okay. 
Um, and I can go into technicalities about that, but it, it was the, it was the the application of that that method of analysis, um, that Bartokian, sorry, that Schoenbergian method of analysis, yeah, to this piece, which revealed so much more than than you would have done with just a standard mm. approach. You know. But I mean, his other papers were were published and, and accepted. What was was it because late in life um, he he his opinions became more divisive or or, or more peculiar or? I think that it was just a case of once you're overlooked and you're not published very much, then people look at your CV and say, "Well, you haven't been published as much as you should be, so obviously mm. you're no good." Okay. Right. It's that basic. Really. I mean, did you did you go to his funeral? Um, I didn't go to his funeral. No, I, I, I wanted to, but you know, okay. I was busy. And that's the way it is. Okay. Um, I mean, some people have have questioned why he called it, why he dedicated it to the wood pigeon, I mean. What, Malcolm Williams? Yeah, right. um, I mean, obviously Bill's got a lot to say on that, but what, what's your thoughts on that? And, and especially the, the instruments he sometimes right. selects to... to oh, if you're, sure, if you're actually talking about the piece itself, yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I do. I'm not a great fan of, of Malcolm Williamson's music, uh, but you know, this is an interesting piece, and I find it fascinating from a harmonic point of view, which is why I was attracted to the analysis yeah. that Bill did. Um, but, in but more broadly, as a piece, I like it, but I think there are things that I, as, um, well, I do compose, I'm not a composer, but I do compose. Um, a lot of musical, uh, musical analysts do, do compose, so my compositional side of my character um, I would have made some different decisions. I mean, okay. I guess you bring it up, and one of the main things that he does, obviously, he has the call of the wood pigeon, <laughs> um, as you'd have to have, and he gives that to them soon. And okay. personally, <laughs> I just think that was a basic mistake. I mean, the the call itself is has has a very smooth attack, mm. whereas it's very difficult to produce that on a double reeded instrument. So, I mean, I personally would have chosen say the bass clarinet. Right. Uh, where you can have that smooth attack. Um, but it, he does one one of the things I do like, and this is this is something else. Not in, this is not in harmonic aspect of music, but Bill did pick this up in the analysis as well. Is that Malcolm didn't do what you might expect with that call, which is to say, uh, I have a particular rhythmic notation for the call of the wood pigeon, mm. and that gets repeated over and over, mm. and then perhaps is subject to um, variation in mm. mm. metamorphosis in mm. a compositional kind of way. He did, he did a little of that. But what I like about it, and what Bill brought out of this, was that Malcolm obviously listened to the call out in nature, rather like uh, Olivier Messiaen I, I, I used to do, you know, go into the forest of the tape recorder. I don't know whether Malcolm did that, but uh, right. he obviously was sensitive to the fact that not, e well, that every wood pigeon sound is different. Really? Yeah, that's right. And, and, and yet they all, they all conform to a basic pattern. It's like, then you know, you, like you have a sort of, um, a template okay. uh, within which there's, there's room for movement. Right. You sort of mean. So the template would be Roughly like this, you know, but within that you can have a great deal of metric um, indeterminacy. So you might get uh, okay. get the difference. You know, there was the, there was uh, a longer note there. In okay, the right. Um, so every bird that you listen to is going to be just slightly different. Okay. And yet, one very interesting feature of the call is that. I would say 80 to 90 percent of the birds will have an irregular meter. Right. So that if you wanted to notate it, um, the time signature, you're not going to give it something like six eight, three four. You're going to give it something more like three four three eight, three four three eight. Okay. It's, it's that irregularity. I mean, for example, that would be say a, a crotchet with a minimum and then three quavers. You go. <laughs> And so, um, in the piece, he does that. Okay. If it would tend to be irregular, 
but they were always slightly different, mm. but not in this compositional sense, this, this, mm. this traditional comp compositional sense mm. of, of saying, oh, you know, here's the little wood, mm -hmm. wood pigeon theme, I'm going to vary it here, mm. and see how it, it linearly develops from one section to the next, nothing like that. It's, it, here's a, a quasi-random version of it here, yeah. here's a quasi-random version of it there, you're all within that set template, the templates of what you expect to hear, as if you're listening to different wood pigeons mm. in, in different forests. Okay. I mean, in terms of the paper, would you like, would you like to see it published posthumously at least? I mean, it certainly sort of, should be. Yeah, it certainly should be. Um, do you feel it's been? Is there something political about why it's been absolutely yeah. repressed? Because people it? don't like to admit that they're wrong. Right. People don't like to admit that their previous supervisors were wrong. Right. Because when you do that, you're not likely to be promoted, are you? Yeah, no, okay. I'm sorry to be cynical about it, but yeah. that's the way things tend to work. I mean, I have personally written to the International Journal for Musical, for musical Anal Analysis. It yeah. was a difficult word to say. Yeah. Um, easier word to write. <laughs> um, but, you know, they're very polite, but... Mm. Yeah. I presume... Yeah. Like, well, my that's a strange question, but presumably where you live, um, you get to hear the, the wood pigeon quite, quite a lot, so... Yeah, yeah, it's a lovely sound. I mean, was it unusual that, that um, you know, Malcolm composed it in, in a large city and, and so the, the sound of the wood pigeon w was not something he was as acquainted with as you are, perhaps? Well, he was acquainted with it. Okay, he composed it in a large city, that was just because he was... He was living there at the time as a composer okay. in residence, mm. but yeah, he actually spent a lot of his time living in the country, so yeah. he was very familiar okay. and, and composed it from memory. It's not a hard thing to remember how it sounds. Okay, yeah. okay well, thank you for that. Well, I wish that we could hear one, it would be rather nice, but there's not much chance just sitting here. But uh, we could go out for a walk, I suppose. Some, some I don't. You you want to talk about other things as well? Well, we can just talk yeah. As we walk. Would that be okay? If you're okay with, if you're not yeah, too busy. Just walk around here, or um, it's a nice day to be at the coast. Actually, do you want to go to the coast? Um, Southport's pretty close. Just walk yeah, on. yeah, yeah. I don't mind. Okay. Yeah, um, if, as long as you're all right with that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So I've been sat here for hours and just <laughs> okay. Nice to have a change, really. All oh, right. Well, thank you. Ooh, Great. Thank pleasure. you. You wouldn't want to live in London. I was catching the train the other day. The, it's really packed. 
there was this chap sitting kind of on one of these seats that are kind of like a, a padded sort of just here on the side of the train and his legs were sticking out and this woman accidentally trod on his toe and he got really cross, really angry, swore at her and he had his legs sticking right out so he could have easily stood up. So he, she did it again, the woman, and he still he made a real fuss. So when everyone got off the train, I deliberately trod on his foot and just said, oh, sorry, sorry. But that's what it's like living in London.